So I, I'm going to talk lessons learned, and uh, I think four soils, the reason I keep going back to it is uh, Jesus says it's a pretty foundational parable. And uh, so um, I'm, 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 I won't pull all the truth out of here. I, I may not pull any of the truth out of here. You guys will have to kind of uh, figure it out for yourselves um, what that looks like. But let's look at um, Mark uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. Um, just for ease, I'll, I'll read it so you guys can go check it out. Um, I'll read it out loud, verses chapter 4, 1 through 20. It says again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out in the lake while all the people were along the shore uh, at the water's edge. Uh, parentheses, that's to improve acoustics and, and help people hear better. Uh, he taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and uh, grew and produced a crop, and some multiplying 30, 60, uh, and some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears, let them hear. And it doesn't say here, so between verses 9 and 10, 10 it says when he was alone. So verse 9, it, it, it didn't say... Uh, what he, what he actually did was he, uh, he took the mic and, and dropped the mic and walked away. Um, so that's what he did. That was, that was how he, he taught. Here's a huge crowd that no one can see. Like, no one, like, he has to be able to amplify his voice for everyone to hear him. So a big crowd, and he kind of pulls back and uh, gets some standoff distance. And then um, Jesus' love for the crowd, this is what he says, uh, is that there's, there's four t- types of soil. And I, 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 like the, uh, I like drawing it out. So you're, you're going to have to see my artistic ability, too. So the first soil was a hard path. Uh, so here it is, kind of like on a road. Some seed falls on it. And uh, the birds come and eat it up. So this is, this is birds. That's the easiest way to draw birds in my mind. Birds like flying. Uh, second soil. So this one, um, there's that. It's got rocks in it. It says there's a sun. And that it had no root. And so when the, it kind of like died. When the, when the sun came up, uh, cause the, because it had no root, because of the rocky soil, it died. The third one it talks about is, uh, this one has root. Let's see. So it's got like a little leaf. Looks more like an ear. It's a leaf. It's got thorns. And the thorns uh, stop it from being productive. And the last one, uh, is really productive. And it's kind of dropping off seed here and it's reproducing. Uh, times 100. 36 to 100 fold. So that's what, uh, that's what Jesus tells uh, the people when he leaves. So we, we pick it up, and, uh, and then when he's alone with his disciples, in verse 10, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to those on the outside. Uh, everything is said uh, to them in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving. They may be ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The, father who's, uh, the farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in, their, uh, sown in them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. But still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, 60, and some 100 times what was sown. And then he goes down and breaks it out a little further. Uh, so he explains a little bit. And um, so I was having a discussion with um, a few people this week, and uh, uh, what, I was, uh, what I was saying was that the... Um, 
the Luke passage kind of opens this one up a little bit more. So I highlighted Luke 8.15. I like the Mark passage because it kind of gives better setting. But in Luke, there's another uh, key aspect in 8.15. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke. So same, same parable teaching in, in Luke. And in this one, in, in verse 15, he says, But the seed on good soil stands for those uh, with a noble and good heart, who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. So this one he says, persevering. So I think probably a better way uh, to kind of describe this is all four of the soils at one point. Um, so there's probably this hard, rocky, there's a hard soil, there's these rocks in it, there's a sun, there's birds, there's thorns. I think all that's going on in, in someone's life. Uh, and so the question is by, by perseverance. Is kind of what drives us on. Did I spell that right? Perseverance? I think so. Close okay. enough. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So, Luke 8 15, it kind of talks about perseverance. Mm -hmm. and kind of what I want to show is uh, my lessons learned, um, not just from JBLM, but from my, my time in the Army. So I've, I've spent 12 years in the Army. Uh, and actually, uh, I want to talk kind of high school and kind of watching this progression in, in my personal life in different aspects. Um, so in high school, uh, I remember when uh, Nick Medica, he's a, he's a uh, tennis player with me, uh, he's a fellow uh, teammate on the tennis team. Uh, dude was impressive. He was actually, he was playing like professional people. Like he was an amazing uh, tennis player. Uh, he could kill me. I wasn't anywhere near him. But uh, he was losing to guys as bad as I was losing to him. Like, he was losing to the pros as bad as I was losing to him. Uh, I could take, like, a game off him. But uh, anyway, so, so I remember in high school, uh, Luke, or not Luke, uh, Nick, uh, inviting me to a Bible study. And I went, and uh, it was probably something similar to this. Uh, there was, like, truth being taught, and, like, people, people were really believing this stuff. And I was repelled by it. I was like, no, no way. Uh, this is like weird. These people are weird. It's like a dark, stormy night outside. I don't know why I'm not at home. Uh, I, I really, I, it, there was truth that was spoken at that event, and uh, I, my heart was hard, and it just was kind of eaten away. So in high school, I, I really had that aspect. Um, I had some Christianese in me, and so I understood a little bit about Jesus. And I, I think I had like a, a, a faint pulse, but I didn't I didn't receive uh, truth when it was when it was preached, when it was taught, when it was shown to me. And I look at that. I look back on high school, and uh, I, I remember the Christian kids that I like I didn't want to hang out with. And I was like, man, those kids. Lauren's laughing because she was one of them. I'm sure we didn't we didn't go to the same high school, but she hung out with the, the Christian crowd. Uh, I I did not respect the Christian crowd. Um, I was repelled by them. Um, and I probably could have learned some really cool lessons from them, and probably my life would be different. Uh, I, it doesn't matter, really. Uh, God's, God continues to work in me. Um, rocky soil, I think this was, um, this really to me was kind of college. And in college, uh, I started to receive truth. It was really cool. Like, I remember the first time I went, you know, and, I, and I heard truth, and I had ears to hear for the first time. Uh, it wasn't the first time I heard truth, it was the first time I had ears to hear. And, uh, man, I thought it was cool. And I started, uh, I started, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Navigator thing and show some illustrations that were, like, key to me. Um, Lauren, I, I, did, I meant to tell you that I was going to ask you this question. Uh, so, so classical, uh, classical uh, form of teaching our, our kids. You talk about pegs and, like, uh, getting pegs. And can, you, can you explain pegs and kind of the goal of uh, getting kids that? Sure. So I don't know what you're going for. Sure. <laughs> Um, when kids are young, uh, you just try and teach them the vocabulary of a subject. And so, for example, history, we just do a big timeline of events that happen over, over history since creation. And then as they grow older, say around middle school, and they like to argue and debate and reason, then they start learning more facts and connecting some of those different events. And they've heard these names, so hearing like Council of Nicaea is not scary to them because they've been hearing this word since they were little. Um, but now they're learning how to connect it to how does that fit into my greater knowledge of history. And then ultimately in the high school years, um, we call it the rhetoric phase, then they're ready to start imparting that 
that knowledge to others and learning how to articulate it and express it uh, in a way that makes sense to them and kind of their individuality comes out and how they're expressing these things that they've been learning and building upon these little pegs for example history pegs and then how all that fits together yeah so they're, they're like they're nuggets of truth that these kids can hold on to and then they, as these as they hold on to these things of like this happened at this time in, in history this happened at this one as they start to build around it it becomes kind of a foundation of them understanding greater and bigger things um, thank you. Uh, so that's that's kind of that's what I what I see in my time in Navigators is illustrations that I use at different uh, that I've learned at different times become these pegs and these different like aspects of truth that aren't the totality of truth, but they help build a bigger picture in my mind as I as I continue to grow. So anyway, in, in college, uh, the illustrations that started to like really peg truth in my life. The first one is the bridge. Um, so I'm just right there. Talking about life and death, it's a it's a it's a the salvation aspect of Christ's uh, work in our lives. Uh, that was the first one. We, uh, a, a baseball diagram, which talked about kind of uh, spiritual development and, and growing through these things. And my goal here is not to uh, share these illustrations, these truths, but just to let you know that these are pegs in my life. Um, and some, some, some of the small group leaders made some of these illustrations, not others, but these, these were things that were big for me. The other one was a topical memory system. TMS, these were, these were pegs that I started to hold on to. Um, but I also remember that, there were, that this was a time when, uh, when hardship came because of the word. I wasn't very good at continuing with truth and, and presenting it. So, um, yeah, uh, tell, tell, talking to my roommate about Jesus was something that uh, I did not have the skill or the capability to do. As soon as someone said something uh, contradictory to my perspectives, I kind of shut down. And I, I wasn't able to really advance, uh, advance my uh, knowledge, my love of Christ. I wasn't able to explain that very well to other people. Uh, and it, I felt limited and, and kind of cut down. So um, I, then, I then went into uh, Fort Bragg, so I went into the military. And uh, for me, uh, so some illustrations that I learned that were big for me. Uh, a pipeline was big. This is a, how, how people develop. i got to put my hand here. Hold on. <laughs> the word hand was, a, was another helpful tool at that time. Um, There's one that talks about the, uh, the Jordan River, uh, the Sea of Galilee, and the Dead Sea, and, and the importance of sharing our, uh, what's going on inside us. Uh, I started to learn uh, how to share my faith, uh, and I, so like raise your flag. Uh, I, learned, I learned how to tell other people about it and the fact that I had to be bold, uh, that I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. I started to believe these things. Uh, God, man, uh, God took me through uh, Deuteronomy uh, 7.22, little by little. Uh, there, so there, there's a like real distinct promise that God gave me. And uh, so, so guys, stick with me right now. I know this is a terrible teaching point. Like what I'm doing is talking about all these cool pegs that I've got in my life that aren't, that aren't necessarily things that we're, we're instilling in you guys. But what I'm saying is I, I learned things, uh, and, I, and I, 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 truth started to get deeper into my life, and they, they became these things that were like, I started to understand truth from a broader perspective. But I had thorns in my life. Oh, I don't even want to like, so, I, I talk about this flippantly, but God, God took us through a really uh, painful period of uh, me hiding my, uh, my personal sins, so pornography, my pornography use, uh, and, and dip, uh, I, I would use... Uh, Tobacco. These things had 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 me uh, a bondage to sin. Um, and I think they really choked out. Uh, they, they choked out some fruitfulness and some some value and, and some things. And uh, anyway, that was all coming. That was all coming to um, JBLM. I think those things were there. Uh, about a year before JBLM, I think God started to like. <laughs> He, he got off to the, the thorns of my life. Um, I started to repent and believe. Became big. Two Kingdoms is another illustration I love. Uh, that, that started to make sense. The Lordship. Uh, these things started to click. 
Um, and by perseverance, I think God is moving me. I, I, please don't hear from this discussion that I believe I'm for soil producing 30, 60, 100 fold uh, yet. But I do think that through perseverance, uh, I, can, I can trust those things. So what I want to kind of talk through real quick is just what does perseverance look like? Like, how do we, how do we really evaluate perseverance and understand what we're doing? Um, so the first verse that comes to mind is uh, James 1, uh, 2 through 4. If someone could read James 1, through, 1 2 through 4. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may perfect that, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Yeah. So you had the wrong translation. Uh, <laughs> no, it said uh, what? Did, instead of uh, instead of perseverance, it's a trial. It said. Uh, it said, it said uh, sorry. Read it one more time, Seth. Consider it all joy, my brethren, joy. when you encounter various trials. Okay, various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Okay, slash right perseverance. Uh, testing of your faith. Testing your faith produces endurance. Yeah, I'm going to use perseverance there because that's what mine says. Yep. And that, that produces perseverance. And let uh, perseverance have its uh, perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Yeah, mature and complete, perfect, lacking nothing. Complete. So I see here in, in the James passage, there's a uh, there's a perspective of uh, trials of many kinds, uh, whether it be uh, rocky soil, um, hardship, perseverance, or uh, a sun coming and and, uh, and and coming after a plant with no root, uh, whether it be uh, thorns, concerns of this world, um, desires of other things. Uh, these things are all trials of any kinds that, that really test our faith. They develop perseverance and bring us to mature and completeness. Um, another passage I think of is Romans 5, 3 through 5. So someone can check that one out. Romans 5, 3 through 5. And not, only in, and not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Yeah, thanks Zach. So we got uh, sufferings or, or tribulation brings about perseverance. What was that next one? It was, uh, wasn't godly character. Uh... Uh, proven, proven character. Proven character. Was there something after proven character? Hope. Hope. Yep. And it talked about God's love too. Yeah. Uh, that God's love is kind of dri driving us through here. Um, cool. So here's another example of um, hardships, suffering, tribulation brings about perseverance, which which really develops character, producing hope. Um, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 9 is another one. Second Peter 1, 5 through 9. Whoever gets there first can read that. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Yeah. Uh, so same thing here where we talk about, I won't write it just because it takes a while, but I, I see a progression where we start off with faith. I think that's probably uh, moving past first soil into kind of it it's sinking into our heart. Faith moving us to godly, uh, to goodness. Goodness moving us to knowledge. Knowledge to self-control. Self-control to perseverance. Perseverance to godliness. Godliness to brotherly love. Brotherly love to love. And what I find is, is so I you put it where you want on the illustration as you, as you kind of look through that scale. But I think it's the same thing. It's a progression. And what I'm watching is, um, I, I'm watching brotherly love and love develop in my life where I hadn't before. Um, which is exciting. Um, 
this is probably going to be, so we've, we've only PCS'd a few times, but I think this is going to be the hardest duty station for us to PCS from. And the reason why is because uh, I really experience uh, brotherly love for a lot of you, uh, like real, true brotherly love. And there's, there's even some of you in, in the audience where we have like genuine love. We love you guys. Um, so, like, yeah, it's, I mean, but like, that's, it's a progression. It's not something that like, I'm not there yet where I love everybody. But like, there's people in my life that like, we're getting there. This is like a real exciting truth for you guys. Like, uh, I'm getting there. Like before, I, I, can, I, I would love to tell you the story that, uh, that God took me through to teach me little by little. And now, I did, I, my prayer was I didn't love people. Like, I, I see in here I'm supposed to love people. Uh, God, how are you going to do that? And, uh, and he smashed me. That's how he did it. He, um, he took my driver's license away. He gave me a, a brain tumor. And uh, that brain tumor caused uh, seizures. And seizures uh, meant that I couldn't drive myself anymore. For eight months, I was surrounded by people. And, uh, and that was a, a personal experience for me in which God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop your capacity to just deal with people. <laughs> And then from there, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this on, like, and I'll I'll, I'll develop love uh, if you if you persevere, if you follow through. And I think of uh, Philippians three ten through fifteen is kind of uh, the end state. So the question is perseverance. So um, I, I see that there's a lot. So there's a lot of different ways that we can understand perseverance. In Second Timothy and uh, the two range right after I think it's like verses three through five. Uh, Paul looks at three different people that are uh, people that persevere. Uh, it's a hardworking farmer. Um, it's a soldier, and uh, who's the other one? We can look it up. So, no, Matt, you're, you're nodding, you know? No? So, you can tell me. I lost it. He's got Second Timothy 2, 3. Maybe? Sure. Hard work. Athlete. Athlete. Is that, does he say athlete there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want me to read it? Yeah, please. <clears throat> uh, so, 2 Timothy 2, start in verse 3. Yeah. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may please the one who enlisted in him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. Yeah. The hardworking farmer ought to be the first to receive his share of the crops. Uh, consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding and everything. Yeah, I, I think those are perse those are people that persevere. A farmer isn't going to get his crop until he perseveres through and works through these things. A, uh, a soldier has to be single-minded uh, in, in, in the mission and, and the objective uh, in order to be successful. Uh, and an athlete, uh, we're watching the Olympics right now, the distinction between these Olympians is uh, their commitment to the sport and their, their drive and their desire. Uh, they persevere through hardship. They, there's always those persevering stories that, the, that they're always sharing. Um, so, uh, what do we persevere towards, though? We, we, we got to persevere towards the person of Christ. Uh, we can't, because we could, we could persevere in, uh, in the things that we believe are strong, like, uh, and it could be wrong, and then we'll, we'll uh, the Pharisees were good at that. They, uh, they, they, they thought they were holding on to truth, they went towards it head on, um, put Christ on a, on a cross for it. Um, so we, we have to be able to uh, understand Christ. But I think there's some wiggle room. So here's, I was struggling with this. I think, um, I think if we're focused on Jesus, we talk about that two degree separation how, over a long time, how uh, there's a big separation. But we're moving towards Jesus. And I think a moving object is easier to kind of guide and move and, and redirect in a, in, a, in a right location. So I think God's graceful, uh, gracious with us. And um, we, may have, we may have the bend off a little bit, but I think he'll kind of curve us in there. So my, my personal experience with that, is uh, I, I think I defined Jesus as a means to an end. So Jesus now became uh, a pathway that I can get through to uh, gain salvation, uh, gain uh, importance. Uh, I, I now have purpose in my life, and that purpose was uh, being reproductive and telling other people there was significance in Jesus. But that, those things were kind of behind Jesus. So um, I think what I learned here was that I used to, I used to look at Jesus. My, my son actually teaches me this. I have a hard time asking my son to look me in the eye. Uh, when, I, when I ask him to look me in the eye, he's always like looking up there. And it's like, no, man, right here. Uh, and I think, I think I do that with Jesus where he's like, hey, I love you, Matt. Like, let's talk face to face. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, what's up? Um, but I, so I, I do that and I look, I look over his shoulder. And behind Jesus' shoulder, I see some really cool things. I see 
salvation. I see uh, acceptance from the creator of the universe. I see uh, eternity in heaven. I see significance in my life that I can do good things. Like I can, I can be fruitful and reproduce 30, 60, 100 times. Um, I can be a part of this promise and this, this covenant that he, he made from Abraham. These are all cool things. But I look, I look behind him and I look kind of over his shoulder and I see those things. And so while I'm oriented on Jesus, I, I'm, I'm excited about Jesus as a means to the end uh, of, those greater, of what I thought those greater things were. As I, as I close the distance with Jesus, he's asked me to kind of look him in the eye, and uh, those things are still behind him, but he's, he's focused on me, and, 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 he, and he's teaching me that. And as I close the distance, um, he's blocking those things. So he's blocking uh, eternity, he's blocking... Uh, spiritual descendants. He's blocking my sense of uh, importance. All those things are still behind him, but my focus is now becoming more on Jesus, and that's really, really exciting. Because what that then does is that gets us that gets us to love, and that gets us to uh, peace, and it, it, it removes these thorns and these these rocks in, in a way that's good. But all that comes through perseverance. Uh, it all comes through that. So um, that's that's I think. The lesson that I'll walk away from JBLM is I'm, I'm watching God uh, come in clearer focus as I continue to ask and, and follow Him. Um, so I think that's 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 kind of uh, what I'm learning and I'm excited about. Um, yeah, any questions or thoughts? Come at me with anything. Like, I mean, I've articulated this well. Um, no, I didn't plan any questions in the audience, so. I, uh, Matt, okay. you are getting ready to make a transition from this community to another one. Mm -hmm. What are some of your thoughts in terms of persevering through that transition and like into your next kind yeah. of phase? Thanks. Um, I told Lauren, um, man, Lauren, when, when did we talk about this? It was kind of when we realized that like uh, uh, our love for people was growing deeper. Um, uh, we, we, we talked about, uh, where is that passage? It's in Matthew. It says, therefore, a teacher of the law who um, has become a disciple in the kingdom is like a uh, owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom uh, new treasures as well as old. Um, so I say that because this is kind of, these things are were old treasures for me because uh, I, I think I was working at, at, I was working really hard at getting these things myself. Uh, and like, if I could just share the gospel with this guy with the right illustration, then it'll work. And uh, and so I was driving really hard with these these things, uh, and they, they were they were good. I was I was a teacher of the law though. I was um, I, I wasn't abiding completely out of uh, Christ Christ's maturity in my heart because I think Christ was still going through a process of maturing me. Um, so there's a book that I read recently that talks about uh, Jesus is really interested in solidifying Himself in us because later in life we're going to minister out of who we are. And so if we don't have Christ solid in us, we can't minister later in life. So I think this phase, these, these phases before JBLM, and, I, and, and 30 years from now, because this, this is a span of uh, 15 years. I think in 30 years from now, I'll, I'll say that right now I'm right here. Um, but I, I, I think that uh, a teacher of the law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. I think uh, that new treasure for me is love for people in, in a context uh, that's better than I was before. Again, I'm not I'm not there yet, but I, I like I love some people, um, <laughs> so we're getting there. Um, so I'm I'm able to bring out new treasures. Uh, so as I go back to Fort Bragg, Fort Bragg is where I learned a lot of these old treasures, and so I look at it and I think, uh, does that mean that these are not worth anything? Uh, but I think quite the opposite. These are these are still really good pegs of truth, and things that have solidified me, uh, that I want to continue to bring back to Fort Bragg. Um, but I think I, I think I have some discernment and, and maybe a little bit of maturity in terms of when to share these things and, and, and how to maybe a little bit better. It's my hunch for now. It's my prayer is that uh, I can I can do that in a greater context of love. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not perfect, uh, Andrea. I was thinking about uh, you know our ride. Uh, we, we we went up uh, to to. Um, uh, no, it was it was to get go car shopping. Uh, and I, they, they, they allowed me to ride with them. So the Sheena Myers allowed me to ride with them, uh, Jonathan and Andrea. Yes, and I, I, you don't know how to drive stick <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to tactfully say that. I don't know how. Uh, they, they asked me to help drive the car back because it was a stick, and uh, they're going to figure out how to drive later. Um, <laughs> so as, as we're up, I, I was talking about lessons learned, and I, I think I, I said it in a way that 
uh, I didn't have like really like a lot of love, and so I, I felt like I, I hadn't really considered my thoughts very well, and I had to go back and apologize that I didn't say some things really well. I felt like I was a I was using prophecy without love, and so I was like a clanging gong. And so I think about uh, like what love is, and like using our spiritual gifts, and how if we don't use our gifts with love, they just end up being really obnoxious. Uh, so I felt like I was a little obnoxious in the back seat, and had to uh, apologize because I, I don't feel like I was I was I was good about that. But again. I'm sensitive to that, so like we're we're getting there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks. That's a great question. But yeah, I, I feel like going to brag is uh, using these old treasures uh, and bringing them in the context of new treasures, a uh, depth of Christ in me that uh, wasn't there beforehand, and I, I'm excited about that. I, I think uh, the danger is we say that we we won't use these things until Christ is full in us, and uh, I think that's that's a problem. That's not perseverance. Uh, that's not moving forward. Uh, so I think that's that's part of the process. Part of the growth. Thanks. Any other questions? Thoughts? Uh, I was curious if someone came alongside you during these seasons, is there something that they could have helped you do? Oh, great question. Man. Um, Mike, I think we talked about that uh, at, at lunch a little bit uh, after you left from lunch. Like, because um, I, I think uh, for me, um, I have a hard time with this, and Lauren, I think, has a harder time with this. Um, so, so what would it look like if uh, I cleaned porn and, and dip out faster, those storing things? I think those are, those are key issues. Um, or if, uh, I mean, if, I, if, I had, uh, if, if Nick had, uh, had spoken in a way that I had received it, and then my, my trajectory would have been a little bit different. Maybe these thorns wouldn't have even been in my life. Um, 